Hey everybody, this is Zach Hamp with Comerica Park in Detroit, which is my 18th Major League Baseball stadium this season. And I am here for one day because there's something big happening, as you might be able to tell based on how many people are waiting outside to get in. So the Tigers are celebrating their former manager and one of the newest members of the Hall of Fame, Jim Leland. And there are commemorative baseballs that will be used during the game. So that's why I'm here. That is my goal to snag one. I have seats. You ready for this? Well, I'm not gonna spoil it, but in such a cool spot. I've never sat there here, and I rarely sit there at any stadium. So get ready for that. This place is opening in just a few minutes. So let's go. All right, so here I am entering the stadium, receiving the giveaway, and right here is your first look at the field. And if you pay close attention to the infield grass way off in the distance, you can see a big black object there. And I'll give you a closer look at it right here. That was a stage set up for a pregame ceremony for Mr. Leland. So that meant no batting practice whatsoever on this day here, where I knew there was gonna be a big crowd, a Saturday evening game in the summer, so tough to get baseballs, but look at this. That is a toss-up landing in the seats and my friend Aaron right there making the grab. So I'll just tell you quickly while you look at the Tigers warming up that this was my 29th lifetime game that I had ever attended at Comerica. Pretty good considering that I live in New York City. And way back in the day, I went to three games at Tiger Stadium. So you can see me right here. I'm going to start jumping around like an idiot because that guy circled was Brian Sammons, a Tigers pitcher. And look at that, my jumping around paid off. I was on the board and had a few words right here for the camera. It's a regular ball. You gotta snag a gamer to get the commemorative, but still cool. As I almost always do after catching a baseball, I looked for the youngest, cutest kid and handed that one off. And wait a minute, had to get that fist bump in there. So that felt good. And after that, well, there was some action in the Tigers bullpen. So it was just nice to hang out in the front row and get to watch everything. And I was thinking at this point, maybe I can get another baseball from them. But then I saw the Royals all the way across the field down the right field line. So I took off and began the journey halfway around the stadium. So here I am wandering over to the third base dugout, just watching the infielders doing their thing. And you're gonna see this ball right here thrown by Jose Alguacil, a coach on the Royals. So that was my second of the day. And once again, I handed that off to a little kid. And there were many fist bumps to go around, not just for the kid, but also for the adults in his life. So just keeping those good vibes going. You can see more balls being chucked into the crowd here. This young fan makes a play on that one and pay close attention to the ricochet here. The fan down in front, well, yeah, quick hands just scooping that up. He was like, all right. Now we don't have a shot of this ball that I got. It was thrown by Lucas Urseg, but we do have a shot of me handing it to a very little kid. So that was number three on the day. And well, let's just say there was still more glove work to be done. Well, it is a glorious day in Detroit. Perfect weather for a baseball game. And I gotta tip my cap to the Kansas City Royals for being very generous with the baseballs. Not just to me, but they've been hooking up other fans all around this place, which is really helpful on a day with no BP when I'm always nervous about getting shut out. And you know, lately I've been in the habit of visiting the upper decks at various stadiums. I did it earlier this week at Cincinnati. I also did it in Cleveland. And guess what? Now I'm doing it here in the D. Always great to get that bird's eye view and it's just such a chill place to hang out in the shade and soak it all in. And you guys should get in the habit of saving money on your tickets. Yes, that's right, I'm giving a shout out to my friends over at SeatGeek. 
because they are sponsoring this video. Now, I hope that you guys are aware by now of the fact that SeatGeek is the official ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, so they got you covered for all of your ticketing needs. And the fine folks over at SeatGeek, you know what they've done? They have given me a special code that I can pass along to you guys. And when you use it, you can save 15% on your tickets. It's a great deal. You gotta take advantage. And in just a moment, I'll explain how it actually works. But first, a little refresher course on what it looks like when you use the app. SeatGeek gathers tickets from all over the internet into one spot to make it so easy to buy. Very user-friendly. And here's what to keep in mind. When you pull up the seating chart and you see all the colorful dots, guys, focus on the green ones because those indicate the best deals. The red ones, not so much, all right? Also, SeatGeek, they rate every ticket from zero to 10. So you can tell right away just how good of a deal you're getting. And SeatGeek also has a buyer guarantee, which means that you can shop with confidence. Now, as far as taking advantage of the deal, using the code, saving the money, so easy, all right? Check the description for this video. You'll find the link there. And when you click it, just do one of two things. Either sign into your SeatGeek account or sign up and create an account. And in the little promo code section, the code that you want to enter is ZAK15. That is Z-A-C-K-1-5, got to spell it right. And this one-time code will save you 15% on any one purchase with a maximum savings of $25. So again, Zach 15 definitely take advantage. And guess what? I bought my tickets today on SeatGeek. No, not here. Way down there, right next to the field in the front row, down the left field line. And just to wrap this up quickly, keep in mind that SeatGeek is the number one ticketing app with more than 70,000 daily events. So even if you're not seeing the Tigers or Major League Baseball, there's so many other ways that you can buy tickets and save money. So no matter what you're going to see, check out SeatGeek first. And what I'm gonna check out right now is the Jim Leland ceremony, which should be starting any moment. Tremendous ceremony right there, and when I saw Leland heading to the dugout, I decided to head down there myself and get as close to the man as possible. He had just been enshrined to the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown two weeks earlier, so it was cool to be up close to someone who was a three-time manager of the year and won a World Series in 1997 with the Florida Marlins. And so with the game about to begin, I headed down to my seat right along the foul line. You can see what it looked like down there. There were a few fans that wanted to say hey and grab some picks. And before long, well, it was time for the Tigers to take the field and play ball. And yeah, these seats were a bit far from the infield, but we were so close to other stuff like the bullpen catcher warming up Wenzel Perez, the Tigers' left fielder. And just pardon my beat up shoes, but that's the warning track right by my toes. So first batter of the game was Freddy Fermin. He hits a ground ball to shortstop Javier Baez and you'll see him get thrown out at first base. Now that ball gets thrown back to Baez, tossed around the horn a little bit. I'm gonna slow it down right here, and in addition to that, I gotta freeze it. That's the ball, and in the background, there's another ball being thrown back to the pitcher. So Andy Ibanez, the third baseman, is about to chuck that ball to the pitcher. He's like, oh, wait a minute. He throws the ball out of play, that's it rolling in slow motion, to the ball boy, 
who takes a look at that commemorative logo, I guess, and then hands it to a young fan nearby. And so there were actually lots of balls throughout the game that got chucked out of play. And I have to apologize for how bad the video looks here. The sun was in our eyes. The Tigers, they don't allow nice cameras in the stadium, so this whole video was filmed with iPhones. Anyway, Bobby Witt Jr. just made that catch right there. This ball gets tossed out of play as well. And just look at all this action down the line. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> wow. On the board. That was custom made, baby. These seats, look at these seats. I love it. It's so rare to be able to reach over, in, in the age of netting, to reach over a railing and make a play. Like, you just can't do that in most stadiums. So, did a little research. I saw that these seats were exposed, and <sighs> that was exhilarating. And we are through two and a half innings. Thanks for you, my dude. Thanks for tuning right. in. Oh, come on, right here. Oh, oh let's see if they throw this out of play. Catcher number 34, James Roger. I got it, I got it. Guys, do you recognize him with the mustache? You may not. This well, what's is, going on, YouTube? This is Mitch, former Watch with Zach dude. This man snagged four foul balls during four. one major league game. Four. At a time when my personal record was only three. <laughs> I since tied that mark and then I broke it. But remember, the Thank next you day, you oh, broke it. I tied it. Tied it. it was will, a great weekend. I will link to the video that I did oh with God. Mitch in the description. Go watch it if you haven't. Awesome video. Yeah. <laughs> awesome dude right here. And actually, I bought all three of these seats, but I'm only using two. So he's chilling for a bit. Just for a little bit. <laughs> oh! 
Vinny Pasquantino, the Royals' first baseman, breaking the scoreless tie in the top of the sixth inning. And so normally I'm out in the outfield complaining about the lack of scoring, the lack of long balls. Today, I don't give a damn because I'm just chilling here, a little heaven on earth, waiting for all the, the balls being chucked out of play and the foul balls so they can hit zero home runs for the rest of the game. I'm in chill mode. shouldn't be sitting like this. You gotta be on your toes in this section. Anything can happen. Here we are in the bottom of the eighth inning. First batter is Colt Keith who hits this lazy fly ball to shallow left field. MJ Melendez makes the catch, tosses it to Bobby Witt Jr. And this ball gets chucked around a little bit, ends up in the glove of Paul DeYoung who once again throws it toward the ball boy except guess what? He threw it right to me. This was my 10th of the day. And I decided to keep this one and give one of my earlier baseballs to that kid. I don't know, number 10 was just a cool number and the ink on the logo is a bit darker so you can see it right there. Anyway, bottom of the ninth inning, Hunter Harvey comes into the game. The Tigers at this point were losing three to one so they had to score two runs, which quite frankly did not seem too likely. But then, Bly Madris, look at the yellow ad on the outfield wall, ready for it? Yeah, the ball goes right over that and fell into a skinny little gap between the outfield wall and the seats. That was a solo home run, made it a three to two game. And for Madris, this was his first homer with the Tigers and only the second long ball of his career. So just a huge, huge moment for him. The place of course was going crazy, but the Tigers still needed to score one more run. And so here we are, one out runner on third, Javi Baez at bat, and could this be a sack fly to tie the game? Well, we just held the camera on the runner on third and this ball actually fell in for a double. Oh my God, look at my reaction. We got a tie game in the bottom of the ninth. And look at this. Yeah, I was excited to say the least for free baseball as we headed to the top of the 10th inning right here. Jason Foley entering the game for the Tigers. And of course, there was still lots of hype in this stadium. But guess who is up at bat? Bobby Witt Jr. He strokes this liner to center field and Parker Meadows lays out. Incredible catch, but you know what? That was a sacrifice fly. It brought home Kyle Isbell. So the Royals took a four to three lead at this point and that's where things stood when this game headed to the bottom of the 10th inning. And the drama just kept going from here. Two outs, 
Two strikes on Justin Henry Malloy with a runner on third. If he struck out, the game is over. But look at this. He lines one to right field. This was a double that brought home Wenseel Perez from third base. This tied the game. And oh my god, if you thought this place was going crazy before, man, oh man, everybody was so hyped. So look at this. Tie game now, heading to the 11th inning. Yeah, the fans were kind of pissed off to see the Royals take the lead on that RBI single by Hunter Renfro. And so bottom of the 11th, this game just did not want to end. Parker Meadows right here hits one over the right fielder's head. This scored a run. Ryan Villade right here rounding third base. And you'll see Meadows cruise on into third with a triple. Truly amazing. And so my videographer and I both got caught up in all the hype and excitement. I barely noticed this ball rolling right to me. It got chucked out of play. And so I snagged a triple which would have been cool to keep, but I handed it to that kid. It was his birthday. He was pretty happy. He'd been trying for a while to get one. And I mean, yeah, the baseballs just kept on coming. I wanted this game to last 20 innings, but look at this. Wenseel Perez hits one out to right field, and Hunter Renfro, good with the bat, not so much with the glove. That brought home the winning run. A walk-off win, 6-5 to five on this day to celebrate Jim Leland. Players going nuts, fans going nuts stadium lights and LED boards going nuts. What a moment for the city of Detroit. You can see it right there, the final score and the final hit. And so Jason Foley picked up the win with his two innings in relief. And for the Royals, James MacArthur suffered the loss. And also for KC, Bobby Witt Jr. Man, I love that guy. This was a rare offer for him. He went 0 for 4 with one RBI. That was the sack fly in the later innings. And so I was just up here in the concourse, chilling with some fans. And one thing that I saw was this big sign for Jim Leland. So I called over my videographer because I wanted to get a shot of what was on the back side. So many people had signed it and I wish that I had written a nice little inscription to go with it, but I was distracted. But hey, at least Leland has my signature, which I'm sure he so desperately wants. And so that was it for my time inside the stadium. And now that I am back outside, really all I have to tell you about is the baseballs, 11 of them total, which is just crazy. Seven game used balls. I knew that spot was gonna be good. I didn't know it was gonna be that good. And so I gave 10 of the 11 away, just kept this one commemorative. I really would have liked to save a few more of the commemoratives to give them out to my friends back home. Would have been nice to give one to Dustin Hughes. He's a collector, but there are so many kids. Couldn't say no to the kids. And I gotta give some props to the Tigers for doing so many commemoratives every time they honor one of their old players, or in this case, managers. I mean, the Mets just retired Daryl Strawberry's number. There was no commemorative at City Field. Come on, Mets! But the Tigers know what's up, so. The 11 baseballs, they all count, even the giveaways for the lifetime total. So, that number is 12,643! You know who's very happy for me? Get over here. This is Aaron, you guys know Aaron. Say hi to the people. Hi. So, how many subs do you have on YouTube right now? 2,600. We need to get Aaron to 3,000. And when that happens, you're doing a giveaway. It's huge. It includes a $100 gift card to Fanatics, cool. right? Yes. And a couple signed balls from some Hall of Famers. So, subscribe to Aaron. You can see it up here on the screen. I'll link to it in the description as well. Always great seeing you. You got the commemorative. You have it on you? I don't, it's over there. It's in the bag. Trust me, she got the commemorative. So, that's basically it. I think we're gonna go, oh, oh, look at this. You know how I always bring gifts? Look at that. All right. Well, I signed many autographs and now I've received one today. So, thank you very much. And, wait, that was a bad one. That was like the foul tip of fist bumps and as I always say, I've been carrying this around all night. We're gonna go eat Buddy's Pizza now, right? With some friends. Gotta bring a Ziploc for the commemoratives. You know the hashtag? Not Dasani. That's one, but, but this one is hashtag protect ya balls. So that pretty much 
wraps it up here from Comerica. Check the description, all kinds of stuff, including SeatGeek. Use the code, save some money. And I'm flying home to New York tomorrow. I have one full day off with no baseball. And then I'm going to Yankee Stadium. The Angels are there. Can't wait to see Mike Trout. Anyway, it's still going to be fun. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe to me as well. Bye. Everyone's smiling and happy and laughing. Oh, wow, what a great time we're all having. <laughs>